for you, serving you in the same capacity as I am tonight, President of the Minneapolis Area Chamber of Commerce. And I promise you that I'll try not to bore you, telling you the same things that I told you one year ago. So I won't. Many things have changed in the past year, and I'm here to update you on the things that have changed. Thanks to the last year's board and this year's board, exciting things are happening. At this time, I'd like to introduce the new 2009 Chamber of Board. If you please stand. Vice President Todd Wilson from Wilson Shields Funeral. Becky Austin from the Crooked Nail. John Hudson from GL Hewitt. Jay Macy from USD 239. Dana Rice from Good Samaritan Society. Teresita Bell from Designs. Todd Shanks from Woods and Durham Charters. And our Chamber Rep Representative Sharon Kimmel from the Lions Den. And of course, our Executive Director, Joyce Friel. The amount of volunteer time that these people put in for the chamber is really staggering. However, these are the people that you can go to if you have any thoughts or ideas of things that could benefit our chamber. Thank you very much. I'd like to talk about Joyce for just a minute. She, continu she continues to do a wonderful job for the chamber. For only clocking in a day and a half a week, She's been able to sign four new, net, four new members for the year of 2008. The new members are Comfort Realty, Sports Page Bar, Deb's Antiques, and Robertson Monuments. I'd like to welcome all these new members and I'd like to thank them for becoming part of this organization that has a membership to unite business and professional people in an effort to expand the economy of this area. Many businesses volunteered last year to host either coffees or luncheons or after hours, and I thought it was noteworthy to mention these chamber businesses. Davidson Agency Sunflower Realty, Brooks Insurance, the Ottawa County Extension Cooperative, Pat Johns Realty, Waddell and Reed with Matthew Hessman, United Methodist Church, the Chamber of Commerce, Gen Co., Wilson Shields Funeral Home, Love Inc., and Bennett Autoplex. And thanks to all these businesses for the time and the money that it took to host these events. The coffees and the after hours coming up for this year so far is we've started off with designs already. They hosted an after hours in early January. February 10th, the Housing Authority will host a coffee at 9 o'clock at the Elkhorn Apartment. And I believe that there's a possibility that we might, there might be a couple of rooms that we would be able to tour. Uh, in March, Love, Inc. will host a coffee right here at the John Henry Center. And April 7th, the Minneapolis Messenger will host an after hours at the Minneapolis Business Center. And we'll have Linda Sutton, who is a business consultant from Clive County Community College in Concordia, come and talk to us about small businesses. The Chamber's mission statement, which is printed on your program, says the mission of the Minneapolis Area Chamber of Commerce is to be a dynamic area business organization striving to promote growth, prosperity, and quality of life for our members and our community. We're not everything to everyone, but with each individual that's involved in the chamber, this provides the opportunity to accomplish collectively what no one could do alone, thereby creating a pool of resources from which to draw ideas, energies, and finances. And at this time, I'd like to share with you a little bit about what the chamber has done and been involved in in the past year. And last year, we started off with the Anna Chamber Banquet we hosted the Valentine Shopping Days downtown, which was February 8th and 9th. We sprayed the sidewalks and gutters for weeds in the downtown area. We bought and planted flowers in the flower boxes on Main Street. We hosted the citywide garage sale and bake sale. We hosted the circus, bought spring and summer banners for the downtown light poles, sent welcome back to school baskets for the staff and faculty in our, all the schools in our district. We provided information on the radio about activities in our community on KINA 910 Salina and KNCK in Concordia. We started this in 08 and we continue to do this in 09. I get to do it, <laughs> yeah, so far anyway. If anybody has anything they'd like to pass but on the radio, please uh, contact me because I'd like to do that. Uh, on Thursdays, 8.50 in the morning, I talk with Jerry Henriquez. Some of you may know Jerry and he, he and I kind of, I don't know, he interviews me and I tell him what's going on. We have a good time doing that. And then KNCK, I'm not sure when that comes on, but that's a scripted. I just talked for two solid minutes about stuff going on in Minneapolis. So if there's anything you'd like for me to share, I, I certainly would. Uh, the Chamber also has provided 
two DVD players and one bicycle that was donated from G.L. Hewitt for back-to-school drawings held at the Minneapolis High School football game. Uh, we hosted the annual downtown Halloween parade, complete with hot dogs and cookies donated by the BFW Auxiliary Ladies. Uh, we hosted a gingerbread Christmas in downtown Minneapolis, which included Santa's house, which was new this year, complete with Santa and Mrs. Santa. We had window judging contests, turkey drawings throughout the holidays, horse and carriage rides, kids movie, and we introduced what we called the shop house, which was uh, the idea was to entice shoppers to shop in Minneapolis. And we also had a spaghetti dinner December the 10th for a fundraiser. A big thanks go, up, go out to all the businesses, individuals, and group volunteers in all capacities with their help with all of these events that were hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. Many people were involved in helping the Chamber, and without them, these events would not have been completed. After all, the Chamber is people helping each other. Several things are in the works for this year as well. We obviously are starting off with a banquet tonight, followed by a fundraiser supper at the high school basketball game on Friday, February the 13th. This is an invitation to you to get out that evening to support the Lions and your local Chamber of Commerce. It will be a good year thanks to the talents and efforts from all our team, which includes you. And now, it's my sincere honor and privilege to present the Community Service Award for 2008. You know them. However, you may not know some of the things that they have done or continue to do for our community. I've compiled a partial list of what this organization is all about. First of all, this group is celebrating their 65th anniversary. I believe Eleanor Leach has been with this group for the past 61 years. Is that right, Eleanor? That's your that's name.
think they'd like for all of the uh, ladies that are VFW Auxiliary, please stand. Chamber decided we were going to do kind of what's called an excellence award. And last year we recognized the city of Minneapolis for their outstanding efforts for cleaning up the city after our ice storm. And, and uh, this year there was another group that definitely needs to be recognized. And if I understand right, ComCare bills over six, over 50 different zip codes every month. So that tells you how many people we have coming from out of town to our area. And when they come to our town, they can't help but see the efforts that the residents of Elkhorn put into their, their, where they live. The landscaping looks beautiful. They put some long, hard hours in there. They tell me that Alice has been very nice to let them do that. <laughs> we thank you for that because uh, without your cooperation, they wouldn't be able to do it. We appreciate you. We hope you keep doing this year after year. So. As a grateful group of people, we at the chamber want to recognize you and say thank you, and would you please come to the stage. share his love of Christ through his music and his word in prisons and churches throughout the Kansas City area. He currently serves as the worship arts director in Indian Creek Community Church in Olathe. He has shared the stage with Linda Randall as a guitarist, as well as many other artists. And I did admit to Lester earlier uh, today when he first got to town that on Wednesday I got a phone call from Linda, and when you answer the phone and she says, hey baby, you know something's up. She said, I have a bone to pick with you. 
I'm doing three concerts on Sunday and you have my guitar player. <laughs> and he pretty much said he wasn't coming back. He was coming to stay with us. So we're grateful for that. Lester's also played at Arrowhead Stadium during the Billy Graham Crusade. And he's played for several Franklin Graham Crusades. <coughs> Since 2003, he has played guitar during several of the Gaither Homecoming concerts. He has produced four instrumental CDs and a new creation Christmas CD. And he also tells me he has a new CD that he's recording now. Afterwards, Lester will be at the rear um, of the building to visit with you. He's got some CDs there, as well as he will be doing the music and bringing the message at New Beginnings Church tomorrow morning. 1030, and you're all welcome to do that. But anyway, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Lester Estelle. Well, before I get started here, you guys have been sitting quite a long time. Why don't you stand and kind of shake some of that roast beef down there, <laughs> some of that chicken.
few years ago uh, with Linda in concert, and uh, thank you, Todd, and, and Stella for having us again uh, this year. Um, I was uh, blessed um, a couple of weeks ago. We were all celebrating uh, kind of a, a different type of inauguration. Um, I can say as a black man, um, I was just, just floored with all of the things that were going on in Washington. I got a chance to watch it on the news and see all the people gathered together. And regardless of your party affiliation, it was quite a moment for Washington. And I remember watching on TV, and, and of course, uh, the 19th of uh, January was my wife's birthday. <coughs> But it's also a day that we celebrate Martin Luther King's uh, birthday and all of the accomplishments of, of him. And then the next day, of course, was uh, we were uh, introducing a new president to uh, the United States. And I remember going to work. I've been employed at the uh, city of Olathe for the last 30 years in the water business. And uh, by the way, I did ask Shelly about your water here. And, uh, <laughs> very good, very good. Let me say that. Uh, but, when I was going to work, um, and I was just thinking about all the things, and I was excited that Tuesday going to work, because I was thinking all of the things and all of the uh, memorable things are going to be happening that day, and I was just watching different tidbits and segments on the TV, and they were showing the ball, and they were showing all of the things, and CNN had all this coverage going on, and uh, it was quite the day. And I remember getting up Wednesday and uh, getting in my little car, headed to work again, and uh, I got a check in my spirit. And what I mean by a check in my spirit, um, it was just like the Holy Spirit just began to minister to me. And he said, you're my child. And I got to think about that. You know, all the excitement of celebrating Pat's birthday on, the, on Monday and then uh, President Obama taking office on Tuesday. And then him reminding me that I'm his child on Wednesday. That had a little different meaning than all those other little celebrations because not only am I his child for, you know, like a four-year term <laughs> or an eight-year term or whatever their term is, but I'm his child for life. And he called it eternity. And uh, when, I, when I got to thinking about that, uh, I had to think about where is your faithfulness. And I started thinking about the faithfulness of the Lord and why we're waiting for a president to try to pull this economy back together and a Congress to pull this economy back together and senators and all these other people to pull all these things back together. Great is his faithfulness. <coughs> Great is his faithfulness. So I want to try to play that. Mm -hmm.
loud music and instruments. And remember as a little little kid, uh, uh, I used to hate when they pulled out those little hymn notes. Because <laughs> <laughs> they went on and on and on and on. And they had a second verse and a third verse and a fourth verse. And some of them had six verses to them. But as you get a little older and you experience something we call life, you have an appreciation for those songs because it's those songs that hold your life together, literally, and hold your focus together. I remember uh, thinking um, how music actually uh, changes and uh, how music is so universal. And, I, and I, I tend to think that, and you may help me with this, I tend to think that music is about what you prefer versus anything else. It's what you're around. It's, it's sometimes what's in your culture. Um, many years ago, we were calling music that, uh, in the 80s, we were calling that temporary. Now we call that classic and traditional. <laughs> and so um, I'm, I'm going to do some of that classical and traditional music. But this song simply speaks uh, to me, and it says, it is well, it is well.
you to uh, uh, the blessing uh, that the Lord has placed in my life for the uh, last uh, 31 years. And what a blessing she has been. We have four children together. We are expecting a fifth grandchild here in about two weeks. And I can tell you, the Lord knew who needed to be in my life for all these years that I have been upon this planet to keep me grounded. I told uh, one, I told somebody here earlier, she keeps me grounded, she keeps me balanced, and this is the love of my life. Pat, Estelle, will you welcome the question?
people at Gibson and keep people at Fender, they just keep on making new equipment and you know how it is, men. When we want to go out and have another toy, we just... I wrote a song for her uh, some time ago and uh, it's based out of Proverbs. And it's the, the theme of Proverbs talks about when a man finds a wife, he finds a favor and obtains favor from the Lord. This song is called Proverbs, entitled Favor. Chet did it, and he, he literally played the 
bass and the lead and the rhythm part all together. And I'm going to try to try to do something similar to that. So don't tell Chet that I'm copying this stuff. <laughs>
started doing uh, songs like this one.
collection than the one that I, I was able to share with you because, again, I, I so appreciate the folks that are fighting for our nation and serving in different areas, Afghanistan and Iraq and all around our world. And so I'm going to do just a, a first part of this rendition talking about our country. Again, thank you for having us.
As Cindy mentioned, to end the evening, we're going to uh, ask Leroy Goeth to come forward, and he's going to auction off the centerpieces. Again, we want to thank all the businesses who graciously donated those. Uh, it's been interesting to see the different uh, pieces of artwork, and uh, remember, this is a fundraiser for the Chamber this evening. Again, we appreciate you being here. I've got two gentlemen that are going to uh, go around and hold the centerpieces up and tell you who they're from. Most of them have a business card on there, they're identified. Who they are, we're going to put the lights up here in a minute. Uh, if uh, they'll come forward, I think we'll go ahead and start. I think Johnny's going to start in the back there. Um, well, okay. Hey, that made it brighter. All you got to do is just kind of raise your hand. Kind of looks like one time when I was doing a world champion auction contest. We all spectators are still wired. This is and from Hard Rock Liquor. Funny look on. What do you got back there? We've got a centerpiece from Hard Rock Liquor that has a couple of bottles of real wine in it. <laughs> That's for the night, right there. Who wants that? You ready? Sure. Ten, 
Kendall. From where? Dental. All right. Five dollar, ten, five dollar, ten dollar, five dollar, ten 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 dollar, ten